Hi, I'm Bea Kupin and welcome to Rappler Talk. In 2014, Vice President Jeju Marbina was accused of overpricing a parking building contract. The probe has into the issue has since branched out into other allegations, the latest being the alleged overpricing of housing and relocation program. Despite these allegations, the vice president remains at the top of the presidential preference polls. How do these corruption scandals affect Binay's run for the presidency in 2016? Joining us today is lawyer Rico Kicho, spokesman for political affairs of Vice President Jejo Marbinay, to discuss the issue further. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good afternoon. It's an honor to be part of your show. Thank you, sir. Eight months, 18 hearings later, the Blue Ribbon Subcommittee doesn't seem like it has plans of stopping. Um, this week, like I mentioned earlier, new issues came up. Uh, the Delphin Lee issue, um, friendship suites. On top of that, you have allegations of um, anomalies in the Pagibig Fund and the boycott of the Philippines. Last year, the vice president said the worst was over. Do you s is, is the same true to this day? Well, you know, Bea, we were very optimistic. Mm -hmm. But because of the lack of evidence and the factual basis of the previous hearings, we were optimistic that it would already end. The okay. Senate investigation would already end. But, uh, you know, judging from the... Um, the the intensity of the attacks mm -hmm. against the vice president, we feel that this would no longer end. It would continue up to the election time. And we saw yesterday what happened in the Senate. It is like uh, hearing uh, meeting the avance of uh, political opponents of the vice president. Okay. So we would remain uh, focused that uh, the 2016 elections would really be about the competence it would really be about uh, the, the experience and the track record mm -hmm. of a leader who would really steer us to, to the future. Mm -hmm. Sir, you've mentioned before in previous interviews that at the end of the day, um, it should be the courts to decide on whether the vice president did this or that, is he guilty or not. Um, as a spokesman and as a lawyer, how, how do you, how does this, how, what do you, see, what do you, what's your reading of the whole, the Senate subcommittee's hearings? Well, you know, Bea, the last time I checked, we are still a rule of law. Mm -hmm. The last time I checked the Constitution, it is only the judiciary who would be the final arbiter of any mm -hmm. controversies regarding individuals, regarding entities, or between branches of government. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now in the Senate is really, you know, it, it has already veered away from its intention to legislate. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing in the Senate is really in aid of the elections. Mm -hmm. because. Senator Trillanes, for this matter, know or should ought to know that the Senate would not be able to convict. It would not be able to acquit a person. In this particular case, the vice president. Mm -hmm. It is only the courts where, you, where there are rules, where there is, where there is a presentation of evidence, right. and when, where due process would be the hallmark, not in the Senate. So what is happening right now is really more of, you know, trying to discredit the accomplishments of the vice president. We have seen this over and over again. They want to tarnish the reputation of the vice president after seeing that all his accomplishments and programs of government in Makati mm -hmm. has been very effective. Right. So that is the reason why they're trying to, to investigate, allegedly investigate, the Makati City Building Hall too. Mm -hmm. And then they would like to investigate also the, the schools, the, school. the hospitals, and all the infrastructures and projects done by the vice president right. during his time as Makati mayor. Right. Now, second phase, they're trying to discredit the vice president in the gains that Pag-ibig Fund yeah. has achieved. Mm -hmm. You know, together with uh, attorney Darlene Berberabe, mm -hmm. the vice president has steered to a clear direction Pag-ibig. Um, as of last count, I think uh, they have uh, Pagibig has uh, has gained at least 13 billion in profits. That would hap not happen if the vice president was not able to get rid right. Pagibig of all the anomalies. Right. So this is really, really a a pattern, a mm -hmm. pattern being perpetrated by the political opponents that they really need to discredit the vice president at least in terms of perception. Not in conviction, right. but only based on perception and using the time, the resources of the Senate. Sir, 
maybe there's a need to clarify perception versus conviction because because for many people many voters it, it might be one and the same like things that are said before the senate they take it as the truth or they might say oh yeah of course it's true it, well you know perception plays in the court of public opinion okay. conviction is inherent in court of law right. so where is the appropriate venue for all these allegations against not a candidate against a government official mm -hmm. if it is against a government official and you want to know whether or not there is really an anomaly mm -hmm. that happened in a particular transaction or in a particular project you don't go to to the streets you don't go to the media you you go to the court because it is in the courts of law where both parties could ventilate each other's sides fair chance for fair me. chance and due, not fair chance but appropriately mm -hmm. due process okay. on the other hand perception plays you play with the minds of the people you do that by by stating all these allegations even if it is bereft with any merit right. and this is what is happening right now you know sad to say but they're trying to use the senate as a venue mm -hmm. to smear to tarnish the reputation of a person. Okay. It just so happened that Vice President Binay is leading in the surveys yeah. and that they are threatened by the fact that the Vice President would be able to continue his proper projects, mm -hmm. that, they are, that they are, you know, I think that they are really concerned that if the Vice President would continue with, uh, with his rise in the surveys, mm -hmm. would be able to achieve achieve the presidency right. so you know this is not a matter of for the political critics of the vice president this is not a matter of convict convicting him or making him answer for for alleged wrongdoings but for for them to pull him down so that they would have a fighting chance come election time sir but they would argue that they have given the vice president a chance to air his side in the same venue when they invited him at least twice or thrice last year but it was the vice president who turned it down so well you know if if you are invited in the house mm -hmm. and you know that your you know that your host will have the demeanor of senator trillanes mm -hmm. you would have the the prejudgment of senator caetano mm -hmm. and you know the sometimes the 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 naivety of uh, senator pimentel would you bea uh answer that invitation right. but you know we have answered all these charges mm -hmm. we have answered all these allegations in fact we are not dodging all these these uh, issues against the vice president we have filed um, the affidavit of the vice president before mm -hmm. the senate but yeah. they brush it aside right. now have they presented any evidence strong credible and admissible ev evidence against the vice president our answer is no. Right. Second, is it appropriate for them to throw all these allegations before the Senate? Our answer is no. Because the Senate has no jurisdiction to hear and decide controversies. It only has a jurisdiction in aid of legislation. But based on the issues that we are now threading, mm -hmm. based on the demeanor of all the senators, based on the perjured statements of the resource persons mm -hmm. this is really about politics right. plain and simple politics devoid of any merit and without giving proper opportunity and due process to the vice president sir i think a very basic question that was asked on twitter earlier um from at john villaraza how many cases were filed versus vice president jejo marbine at present maybe you can clarify that none you know, Bea, there are no pending cases against the vice president. Mm -hmm. There is a pending complaint, which is now the subject of an investigation yes. by the ombudsman. But can I just uh, try to elaborate on this? Mm -hmm. There's one case mm -hmm. filed against the vice president. Mm -hmm. I think this was 2006 to 2009. I'm not very, uh, I cannot be very specific on the date. But there was a, there was a case filed against the vice president. And it was heard by the Sandigan Bayan. Mm -hmm. It was dismissed for lack of factual basis. Mm -hmm. 
it was dismissed, Mia. Right. And you know the issues that are uh, raised in that complaint? The same issues that Senator Trillanes, that Senator Caetano, and Senator Pimentel are hearing. You're referring, sir, to the which building? The Makati the, City Building the City Hall building two. 2. Yeah, okay. So it's the same. All right. These are the same issues. Same cast of characters, mm -hmm. but different venue. Now, are we trying to give the impression that the Senate is better than the court of law? Right. Are we trying to send the signal that the Senate could brush aside a final decision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of a court of law? Mm -hmm. The last time I checked, it is a co-equal branch. Right. The judiciary and the legislative are co-equals. So what, are, what is happening now? Senator Trillanes knows that the allegations cannot be supported by evidence. Senator Trillanes knows that this evidence, if presented in court, would not be admissible. It would not carry weight. It would not carry sufficiency. Therefore, what is he doing now? Trying to target the independence of the judiciary by hurling all these baseless accusations against magistrates, mm -hmm. against the institution of the judiciary. Why? Because he knows that he does not stand a chance in court because not because we are not because i am representing vice president binay not because he is a binay but because there is no evidence and all these charges Bea, all these charges have all been answered squarely mm -hmm. and the court has already ruled right. you, you also mentioned already sir the allegations um the senator's newest allegations of uh, bribery uh, with the CA uh, for the TRO on the suspension of his son, Mayor Junjun Binay. Um, they've already, if I'm not mistaken, sued for libel. They've asked the CA to cite uh, the senator in contempt and even the Supreme Court to investigate it independently. Um, how, does the vice president have any plans on doing anything to take the senator to task for? Well, we already the filed a libel case. The okay. Mayor Binay yes. filed a libel case. Mm -mm. Uh, Mayor Binay, who is also who is a respondent in a, mm -mm. in the in that yes. ombudsman yeah. complaint, mm -hmm. filed a filed a petition for, to, for petition to cite uh, Senator Torlianes in indirect contempt before right. the Court of Appeals. Mm -hmm. So you can see, Bea, that we are willing to engage them right. in the proper forum, right. where evidence would would be used as against hasty allegations. Mm -hmm where there would be rules as against the bullying of a senator. In a court, everyone has a fair chance right. to be heard and to ensure that his rights would be protected. Mm -hmm. And can we not avail of that available legal remedy? But are we saying that just because the vice president, Vice President Binay, mm -hmm. is being pilloried before the court of public opinion, we could no longer avail of a legal remedy. I mean, the vice president, just like any other citizen, mm -hmm. has, his right. has that right, right, has that remedy mm -hmm. to go to the aid of the, of the courts mm -hmm. when he feels that his rights have been aggrieved or have been trampled upon. But sir, like you mentioned, now it's moved on to the court of public perception. Doesn't it worry you that this would affect um, his chances in 2016 to, to, to win the presidency? You know, we remain optimistic, Bea, that the issues in the next election would be competence and experience, coupled with good track record, mm -mm. because that is what the people need. And the vice president has, sh has shown that he would be able, that he was, he was able to transform Makati. Right. You know, what happened to Makati is a success story. Mm -hmm. But behind that success story is a man, Jojo Binay, mm -hmm. who have a bright and uh, uh, a very good uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the programs of government of the vice president is based on his personal experiences. Right. Bakit ho maganda yung public uh, service sa Makati? Bakit ho maganda yung medical assistance sa Makati? Bakit magaganda ho 
yung hospital sa Makati. Sapagkat para po kay Jojo Binay, namatay po ng maaga ang kanyang nanay, ayaw niya hong maranasan pa ng iba. Yun naranasan niya. You know what the Vice President would always tell me? You know, Rico, I, would, I do not want poverty to be a reason for our people not to have immediate access to proper health care. Mm -hmm. He has experienced poverty. He has worked so hard in his life to overcome it. Mm -hmm. So for Jojo Binay, poverty alleviation can be done. Mm -hmm. Second, the infrastructures, education. You know, not everyone know, know that the vice president has to work in order for him to finish his law degree. He was a working student, and he is a, he is a proud uh, product of public school system. Therefore, the University of Makati is now here to afford the students with good quality education. So it can be done. It can right. be done, Bea. Right. And the vice president has shown that. But sir, that's a story that they're now, um, I'm not sure if twisting would be the right word, that instead, you know, he, he did work hard for Makati, but he also benefited from the city. So we'll go and go, uh, we'll go through the list of the many the, allegations. These are allegations. The, the alle yeah, yeah. The, the, the list of issues and allegations thrown against the vice president. Um, the latest would be the friendship suites and the relocation project in Kalawan, um, overpriced by a billion, according to... That is not um, true. All money used for that project is accounted for. Okay. It has uh, underwent scrutiny by the Commission on Audit. Okay. And it is not true that the vice president benefited from it. Okay. You know, the allegation was overpriced. Yeah. What was the basis for that overpriced? A technical computation offered by Attorney Bondal. But between... Who the can't even really account why it's one billion. When he, he was asked by Senator Pimentel, where is your evidence, he yeah. said, and I could vividly remember, he said, yeah. oh, that is why I'm here. Maybe the Senate could help us look for evidence. Yeah. But is, isn't that fishing expedition? Mm -hmm. Isn't that putting the, the cart before the horse? Mm -hmm. You know, the last time I checked, and you know, he who alleged must prove it. Right. They're trying to allege it. Now they want the vice president to answer. But my question is, and I pose this challenge, where is the evidence? Right. Now, you know, in law, again, I have to speak for, from where I'm more comfortable. Yeah. I'm not a politician, but yes, you, know, you know, in law, there is always a benefit of the doubt given. Okay. The quantum of evidence required for you to convict for criminal cases would be proof beyond reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wag na po tayong pumunta doon. Tingnan na lang ho natin to. Once you allege something, you have to prove it mm -hmm. before the other person okay. would be put to task to yeah. explain. Otherwise, there would, there would be no uh, joining of the issues. Right. So what would happen here? You will throw bricks at me. I will get hit. And then you want me to explain, even if you do not have any reason for throwing that brick at me? Right, right, right. Well, if that is what uh, they want, then let's throw away our courts. <laughs> let's say that we are no longer uh, a rule of law and we are ruled by Senator Trillanes. It's okay. But uh, as long as the institutions of government are there, as long as the Constitution provides that there must be some uh, reasonable and um, proper system mm -hmm. to adjudicate the rights of people, then we have to, we have to follow it. Mm -hmm. But sir, they also brought in um, people who were relocated who said that, you know, the vice president supposedly left them to fend for themselves once they were relocated. Um, what Unfortunately, that is politics, Bea. Okay. You know, we understand that it would be difficult for them, yeah. that the life has been very difficult for them. But I hope we also understand that it is the project of the Vice President to mm -hmm. give them better lives. Right. It is the project of the Vice President to ensure that they are safe where they are living. Mm -hmm. You know, what was, what was their condition before they were relocated? Wala hong nagtatanong nun. You know, these people who were relocated, they live in the streets. Right. They live in uh, hazardous conditions. Yeah. The, but through the project of the vice president to relocate, 
look where they are now. Yeah. It would not be perfect, but it is progression, not perfection. Right. And that has been the mark of Vice President Binay. Now, it has been addressed that up to now, the city government of Makati is helping the people relocated not only in Kalawan but also in Bulacan. Okay. And the, the gripes of two individuals could not, would not lead you to a hasty generalization that the project or the program of the good. vice president did not work. Right. So we asked the people, do we want politics to be this slow? Do we want the Senate to continue? What, what's happening now? It, they're using the Senate as a venue to, to discredit a person. Right. So are we saying that it is okay for the Senate to use its resources and to legitimize black propaganda? That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. That's, that is why we always ask if they have the evidence, they have uh, documents to support, mm -hmm. file the case. Mm -hmm. And we would address it squarely. Yeah. So another of the another of the allegations that we have against the vice president is that he used his positions not just in well in government to further his political cause. Like for example, friendship suites that was used to house um, people visiting from the sister cities, um, and the sister cities helped him become more closer to local chief executives, eventually helping his vice presidential bid. And the Boy Scouts of the Philippines, where he's been the president for several years now, uh, how do you address these accusations? No, Bea, it is hard work. All it right. is the vision of the vice president that is helping him now. Right. You know, when this all started, Vice President Binay was a mayor of Makati. Mm -hmm. I'm sure even you mm -hmm. did not expect that he would win. Well, a lot of people were surprised. A lot surprised, of people yeah. were surprised. But it is through sheer hard work that right. he achieved, that he accomplished all these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to discredit the vice president as if it was that everything that happened now was done just yesterday. Yeah. This was a product of many years yeah. of dedication in public service. This was a product of vision. This was a product of hard work. Right. So it is unfair. And it is too low right. for, for them to say that this has all been done yesterday. No, right. there was a process. Right. And the vice president has shown that time and again, he could do it and he would deliver. And it's hard work. It's not just magic. Exactly. Sir, another another issue, sunud sunud na po, sir. Um, another issue against the vice president now is Delphine Lee, who is now accusing the vice president of being behind the case against him, supposedly because... Uh, Vice President Binay, oh, sorry, Dolphin Lee refused to give money to the Vice President during his 2010 campaign. Well, you know, the platform of Dolphin Lee is just the same platform that they're using with Mr. Mercado and Mr. Bondal. Right. They were, they, the Senate, the so Senator Trillanes, is giving Dolphin Lee a venue outside the court. Mm -hmm. But there is a case or cases pending against Mr. Dolphin Lee. Mm -hmm. We should not lose sight. When this happened in 2010, mm -hmm. there, the National Bureau of Investigation, that, that NBI was not headed by the Vice President. <laughs> Department of Justice was, is not right. headed by the Vice President. So it is through the efforts of NBI and the DOJ that they filed cases of syndicated estafa yeah. against Delphine Lee and others mm -hmm. because thousands of people were defrauded, mm -hmm. allegedly. Mm -hmm. So it is now... Uh, proceeding. The court yeah. case is now proceeding. Now comes Delphine Lee with the aid of Senator Trillanes mm -hmm. using the Senate, the Senate. Yeah. to get back at the Vice President. Yeah. Now they were saying that there, he is alleging that there was an extortion trial. Yeah. What is the basis? Nothing. He would now try to associate Vice President with Jerry Limlingan mm -hmm. and then haphazardly conclude that since Jerry Limlingan is a friend of the Vice President, then the Vice President is guilty. Is it that easy? Mm -hmm. can, can, is that not guilt by association? Right. And does not the law and does not the procedure, civil and criminal procedure, 
prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. So you have to present concrete mm -hmm. evidence mm -hmm. before you could say that indeed that allegation right. happened. So another, another allegation is that um, the, the judge revoked the permission for Delphine Lee to testify before the Senate. And Julianis, and I quote, says, it shows that the tentacles of Bina in the judiciary are already working. Um, that's another yes, there. <laughs> but he was asked, what's your evidence? Right. It would follow. Right. It would follow. Right. So he already threw an allegation. Mm -mm. He wants us to get hit. And then now we would ask, why did you hit us? Mm -mm. Just because. Right. Does but, it not frustrate you, But sir? Let, let me answer that. Who filed the motion for reconsideration that Delphine Lee should not attend the Senate investigation? Was it the Vice President, Senator Tillianes? Mm -mm. The answer is no. It was the public prosecutor who filed. And did Senator Tillianes bother to ask why they want, why the public prosecutors mm. Um, does not want Delphine Lee to attend the Senate investigation. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He didn't bother. Right. But the reason is subjudice. Mm -hmm. You know, Bea, the case is already pending before, before the presiding judge. Subjudice sub prevents mm -mm. parties or any other persons mm -mm. to talk about the case, yeah. to talk about yeah. the merits of the case yeah. outside the court. Yeah. Why? To avoid interference. Mm -mm to avoid pressure, right. and to avoid injustice. What did Senator Terlianis do in, in the Senate? What did he do? Well, precisely, he... Well, he said that Delphine Lee is not guilty. Yeah. My God! <laughs> Are, does it not well, frustrate you, sir, or does here? it not frustrate the Vice President to see these things happen all over, over and over and it, it new allegations every week? It is frustrating, not because we are exasperated with mm -hmm. Senator Trillanes. No, we would face him fair and square. But we are frustrated because why is the entire Senate allowing this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Right. Right. Why? Mm -hmm. We should set the good example, Bea. Mm -hmm. Lawmakers should set the example. But what's happening now? Lawmakers are law breakers. So like I said earlier, eight months, 18 hearings later, and many more to come probably. But yet, polls show that the vice president is still leading. In fact, recently, top of mind survey, um, he's overwhelming lead. Uh, I mean, it's not as overwhelming as before. So do the Senate probes worry you at this point, given the numbers? Well, you know, the survey results we are really thankful. We are, we are grateful, and this would give us more inspiration to fight harder. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But you know, the, the survey results should worry Secretary Mar Rojas. Because if uh, Senator Grace Poe is uh, closing in, right. it, would be, it would not be for the best interest of Secretary Mar Rojas. Okay, so since you opened that up, we're going to go through the top contenders for president based on the recent polls. Uh, Senator Grace Poe is statistically at the tie with the Vice President, according to the last SWS survey, given the margin of errors. Well, Margins it depends of error. if you expand the margin yeah, of error Yeah, if you expand it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you expand it, they're kind of close. Does, does she worry the Binay camp at this point? No, because we remain focused okay. with what we need to do. We need to work harder. The Vice President needs to, to talk to the people, go down and uh, address their needs. Mm -hmm. You know, Bea, we, the, the compelling narrative of the Vice President, mm -hmm. what he has already shown in Makati, the gains and the benefits now achieved, mm -hmm. what he has performed, and what he has accomplished as, housing, uh, as head of the housing sector yes. and OFW concerns, it is a very compelling narrative. Mm -hmm. It resonates to the people that this vice president is a working vice president. Right. This vice president has shown us that it can be done. Right. So it doesn't, whatever results we have right now, Secretary Rojas should, you know, should be the one worried because he would be against right. Senator Poe. Right. 
Sir, since you keep on mentioning um, the, the ALG secretary, he said in an interview, was it last week or the other week, that um, when he was asked if he would be willing to run as the vice president of, of Mr. Binay, he said that he would never ally with those tainted with corruption. How would you react to that? Strong words, yeah. but definitely rhetoric for me. Right, right. You know, the vice president has been very open okay. with his desire to be a healing president. Okay. So, we, the vice president would have wanted to start the healing process, mm -hmm. but apparently, Secretary Rojas is a different um, track. Right. So, we are okay with that. We respect his decision. Mm -hmm. So, we hope to see him come 2016. <laughs> Another surprise showing in the survey is Davao Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. Does he worry you? Well, you know, the vice president has said in his interviews mm -hmm. that um, everyone is free to, okay. to join the presidential race. Mm -hmm. We respect the accomplishments of uh, Mayor Duterte. Mm -hmm. They are both local, a product of local oh, government. Yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah. You know, uh, just like, uh, you know, the vice president, he's a champion and a pioneer of local of, uh the rights of the local government. Yeah. He has shown that in Makati. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, second, the uh, Mayor Duterte is a lawyer. Yeah. The, the vice president in, is a human rights yeah, lawyer. They, they, do, they, they do have a lot so, of things in common. We welcome that development. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Bea, maybe I could share. Mm. You, you mentioned that the vice president has been attacked yeah. by the political opponents for eight months, yeah. continued attacks. Mm -hmm. the, the intensity and the gravity of the attack. Just of hearing, the, just of hearings the attacks alone, yeah. It's is uh, one for the books, so <laughs> to speak. Because he already, he declared yeah. his intention to run as president as early. Now, most of the persons or personalities well, these people have not, declared, have not yeah. yet declared. So now the question is, how would they withstand this kind any of, of them? The, the, the Senator Poe, Senator Rojas, mm -hmm. how would they react? How can they withstand such veracity? Mm -mm. Such, sorry, such ferocity. Mm -mm. Would you, do you think they would stand such scrutiny? Well, but... Some would say scrutiny, sir. From, from <laughs> but the vice president, despite of all these attacks, mm -hmm. have shown tremendous moral courage mm -hmm. he never backed down mm -hmm. the vice president ha has shown immense political maturity yeah. and his message that he would be ready mm -hmm. to be the next president resonates to our people sir should um mayor arab estrada has been rather vague on whether what his plans for 2016 are he he says he wants to run for mayor again but he's not really sure um, what effect would his uh, uh, formal withdrawal as a presidential candidate have on the vice president, you think? Uh, Mayor President Estrada yeah. is a very close ally of the vice president. Mm -hmm. we, we, they, have that, they maintain that solid relationship. Right. And whatever decision uh, Mayor Estrada or pres former President Estrada would, uh, would make, I'm sure the vice president would would be would be uh, part of that, mm -hmm. and uh, it would the the position of the vice president would also be considered. So it was announced late last uh, late twenty fourteen that twenty the early part of this year would be spent. Um, you know, the vice president would, would explain would explain his plans for twenty sixteen, his vision for the country. So far, he's actually expounded already in his stand um, on China. Uh, what else can we, or when can we expect him to discuss well, other... You know, Bea, I'm so happy that you asked that question. Okay. Because it hasn't been asked of us. All right. Because, you know, because of all these distractions, we do not have the opportunity yeah. to, to explain. Oh, so you're just waiting for the right time as well? Yes, because, you know, the vice president has openly stated that his priority would be poverty alleviation. Yes. He has done that in Makati. Right. Second is inclusive growth. Okay. That, there, that there must be trickle-down effect to our people, those living below poverty line. Mm -hmm. and, we, and he knows how to do it. He has done it before. He would continue all those programs. Mm -hmm. 
Healthcare is very important for the vice president. Okay. Education is very important. And infrastructure. So, you know, we are quietly... So really, you're focusing on the economy and the poor. Well, the vice president can run the country. Right, right. And we are very uh, optimistic that in the next few months, yeah. we would be able to articulate all these plans mm -hmm. and raise the level of discourse to policies, not to politics. Right. We're ready for that day. But sir, how do you do that with all the, um, you might call it noise, uh, others would call it legitimate discussions happening in the Senate, you know, the allegations against the, how, how do you pierce through that and actually start talking about your, the, his plans for 2016 with all that? You know, we, we are on. within the timetable. Okay. We know our timeline. All right. We know where we are now and we know how, we know where we want to go. And mm -hmm. we know how to get there. Mm -hmm. Of course, with the able leadership of the vice president. Mm -hmm. So, very confident. We're still very confident. Well, we're, we are not confident, Bea. That's out of, the, uh, out of character for the vice okay. president. Mm -hmm. We are always guided by optimism. Mm -hmm. We are always guided by his experience. We are always guided by his political maturity. Mm -hmm. And we have seen him work. Mm -hmm. We have seen him react to different issues. Mm -hmm. And we know that... Uh, uh, he has already, he is a seasoned uh, public servant. Mm -hmm. Sir, a lot of people early on, given his stand on China recently, were, were concerned because they see him as being too friendly towards China. Very, uh, it was different from, it's different from the current administration's stand on how to deal with, with China. Well, you know, that's a good thing with, if you talk about policies and if you don't talk about politics. Okay. Even in policies, there is no right or wrong. Okay. It really depends on the, the magnitude of the people that would be served by that policy. Right. So this is an ongoing discussion. Mm -hmm. It is a work in progress. And eventually, we would come up with a, a viable solution that is all-inclusive, that right. all the stakeholders will be heard, and all the issues raised by all the stakeholders would be given, would be given value and would be mm -hmm. considered. Sir, maybe you can explain to us also why, how the president reached that stand, uh, the vice president, sorry, reached that stand on China where he was, he was explaining, di ba, na parang we need, we need capital and China has that, so we, we shouldn't, we should tread carefully, something like that. Well, it, is a, it, was a general, it was a general discussion. Okay. And, and, you know, as they always say, that we have to fill in the details. All right. So it is a continuing, uh, con it's a continuing work. Yeah. Um, we well, there are um, members of uh, of the uh, of the team mm -hmm. of the vice president who is really tasked on on continuing and polishing uh, whatever stand that he he mentioned mm -hmm. as regards that issue. Mm -hmm. So, sir, the next the next few months up until October twenty fifteen will be filled with issues, both the bad and the good. We'll, we'll try to dodge the the allegations at the same time. Well, you For know, sure. we, have, we have, we have, I think we have been here, we're, we're still standing, right. we are given a, I think right now we're giving more opportunity to answer, right. and I think the media has realized that all these allegations and all these shenanigans in the Senate would no longer stand. Mm. The public has already yeah. reached that stage where they, they do not want to watch, they right. do not want to listen anymore, right. because they, they have uh, come to realize that all these are recycled right. and that the Senate is not the proper venue. And, you know, I think the, 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 the people is now really looking for results, yeah. which the vice president has time and again showed that he could deliver. Mm -hmm. He has done it. The proper stance in Makati, good education, health care, housing. Right. So... All these accomplishments of the vice president has already has has been highlighted right. with the ongoing Senate <laughs> investigation. So right now the people is uh, slowly um, realizing the positive right. and shedding the negative uh, issues against mm -hmm. the vice president. Despite that, sir, it's going to be a interesting next few months ahead. Uh, October twenty fourteen filing of candidacies finally. Um, but between that, like you said earlier, I don't think the Senate subcommittee will has any plans on stopping soon. So. Well, un unless unless they realize that it is not doing the country any good, mm -mm. let's see. So, would it? Would they like to continue 
to use the resources of the Senate to get back at their political opponent? Or would they like to just stop it, bring it to the proper forum, and at least now work for the benefit of the people? Right. Because while they're doing this to the vice president, the vice president is working. The vice president is continuing with his, with his job as head of yeah. housing sector and all OFW concerns. Mm -hmm. So despite what they're doing, the vice president is seen by the people, the vice president recognizes the needs of the people okay. and addresses it immediately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It was a very interesting discussion. Again, very tough and interesting next few months for the vice president's team. Um, we've, we've been talking to spokesman Rico Kicha about how the latest accusations against the vice president, Jeju Marbinay, is affecting or maybe not affecting his run for the presidency in 2016. I'm Bea Kupin and thank you for watching.